I'm uh, Denise Dombrowski, a teacher here at York House. I uh, sponsor the science fair participants to go to the Greater Vancouver Regional Science Fair uh, every year. And it's a fabulous event in which um, students from grade 7 to grade 12 present their own original research in front of a juried um, audience. Uh, the students get a lot of uh, great opportunity to interact with uh, other students from around the Greater Vancouver region and just share their passion for science. Uh, their topics are generally chosen based on um, their own personal interests. We have some organizations in Vancouver who are willing to help students find mentors should they want to access specialized lab equipment and all of these projects this year were done with a mentor in uh, labs at universities or um, other research laboratories. But that it doesn't have to be the case, many students go um, with a more kitchen home type style um, projects and they are equally as valued as long as the scientific method is um, followed. It's pretty advanced level, especially the grade 11 and 12 students. They, um, Kayla has uh, pursued her project topic area for a couple of years and so they can get to a fairly high level of expertise in their subject area. I would say that most of the students who participate in science fair do go on into science after uh, your house. My name is Jessica and I'm a grade 11 student. Uh, the name of our project is HER2 overexpression in high-grade endometrial cancer and how it's associated with short survival rate. Uh, I have always been interested in HER2, which is a surface receptor, and originally my idea was to engineer a drug that targets specifically the HER2. Um, however, my mentor recommended me to start from the basic and to investigate the effect of HER2 first on endometrial cancer. So basically, um, I'm investigating the lining of the uterus. The lining of the uterus is called endometrium, and um, a lot of these women who get endometrial cancer are women over 40 because they have a lifelong exposure to estrogen, which is a main risk factor. And another part of my project is HER2, and HER2 is a surface receptor, and basically means that it takes in nutrients, but when a mole functions, the HER2 makes too many copies on the surface of the cell, and make, which makes the cell divide uncontrollably. And so basically I want to find out if HER2 does have an effect on the survival rate of endometrial cancer as it had on other cancers like breast cancer. So the first step is to stain, this, um, stain the tumors. And so these tumors, this is a zero, and this is one plus, two plus, three plus, and they're all graded depending on the amount of e expression. My results which supported my hypothesis, which is that if there is HER2 overexpressed, the survival rate of endometrial cancer is a lot lower. Um, my name is Elizabeth and I'm in grade 9. I got a gold medal and I qualified for C CWSF, so nationals for two years in a row. Testing the effect of soft tissue on the torsional and compressional strength of porcine spines. So what I wanted to do was see whether the surrounding soft tissue had any effect on the strength when it's tested. One of my mentor's friends um, works in i -Cord, which is where I got, where, which is where I was testing. and. She was, she was showing me some of the stuff they did in the lab to kind of like give me a sense of like what happens in that lab. And um, when she was showing me some of the tests she had done previously, which where she compressed porcine spines, I realized that this amount of soft tissue um, changed from time to time, like, and she never really mentioned how much soft tissue was on it. And so I kind of asked her whether people consider how much soft tissue is on the spine when it's being tested, and she said that no one has really paid much attention to that part of porcine spine testing, so I decided to look more into it. Porcine spines are pig spines, and so I was testing the top part of the pig spine, which is so your upper neck, so the upper pig spine neck, which is equivalent to your low, your lumbar spine, which is your lower back spine. And um, the surrounding soft tissue basically included the muscles surrounding the neck and the tendons. And so I wanted to see how much of an effect it had on the strength of the spine compared to when it had the soft tissue and when it didn't. And I figured out that in torsion, which is when you're turning it, um, the soft tissue has an effect on the torque and the stiffness. But when you're compressing it in compression, it has an effect um, on the force but not on the stiffness. So it requires a greater amount of force to compress the spine, but the stiffness is about the same. I'm Marissa. And I'm Kayla. 
I'm grade 10. I'm grade 12. Well, now we're sisters. So the title of our project is Duck, Duck, Goose! An application of DNA sequencing. So basically in our project, what we were trying to do is see if we could sequence the DNA in processed down feathers because the DNA is so degraded, we didn't know if we could. So we did that using the FINS method and we were successfully able to sequence three out of the 12 samples. And also because that was such a lengthy process and it was very tiring, we wanted to see if we could come up with a more efficient and feasible method to sequence the down feathers. So we came up with a, a new, a more, more feasible method to sequence the feathers. And it would like, this, is our, this was our procedure. It would cut the procedure off to about here. Yeah. It would also be a lot more accurate when it comes to like determining like the content of the down feathers because you know sometimes it comes into mixtures and according to regulations if something's labeled as goose it only has to be 90 percent of goose ten percent of it could be done. We have like down pillows and down jackets you don't actually know what kind of feathers are in there so it's good to like be aware of what the content of it is because if you're paying for something that's really expensive you want to know that you're getting what you're paying for so yeah that's something that intrigues